This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. The Waco History Podcast is sponsored by Brotherwell Brewing on Historic Bridge Street in Waco. Welcome to the Waco History Podcast. We're going to air for you uh, over the next few months a, a special series of Waco History Living Stories. Uh, these were segments that were originally aired on KWBU here in Waco. Uh, they were produced by the Institute for Oral History editor, Michelle Holland, and narrated by two fabulous narrators, uh, Louis Mazze and Kim Patterson. And so these highlight oral histories from the collection of the Institute for Oral History at Baylor University, which I direct, which has been around since 1970 and has over a thousand interviews related to Waco and McLennan County history, and we're happy to highlight those here. In this Living Stories vignette, I'll dedicate this one to my son Jacob Sloan and his new wife Annie Kate, because this is where they're talking about engagements and weddings, keeping it simple in older times. Then the night came alive with gunfire. He knew that at last it This is Living Stories, featuring voices from the collections of the Baylor University Institute for Oral History. I'm Louis Mazet. In 1881, Southwestern Telegraph and Telephone Company formed with the purpose of operating exchanges in Arkansas and Texas. The company took over exchanges in Galveston and Houston and started several others across the state. Waco's very own telephone exchange opened in the fall of 1881 with 45 subscribers. Robert Lee Lockwood remembers the calling situation in the early 1900s. We had two telephones uh, in Waco. They were two different and separate telephone systems. We called it at that time the old and the new phone. And they were just as separate and independent as could be. And we had two telephones. and. Uh, I remember our phone number, 225, it is a low number, and uh, that's when uh, when we got our phone, that was how many phones were in the city of Waco on that uh, system, and then the other system came in. And uh, it was really, uh, <laughs> uh, you almost had to have two phones if you wanted to reach everybody that had a phone, because some had uh, what we call the new phone, and some had the old phone. But uh, on account of uh, the various work my father was always in, uh, he felt he needed both phones, and we always had that. Mary Sandon recalls the first telephone installed in her family's home. It was one of these that hangs on the wall, you know, you had to crank it. He hadn't had that telephone a week until it was raining one hard one day, and it had lightning and thunder, and the lightning struck that telephone, and it started burning. <laughs> I wish we could have had videos in those days. Everybody in the family was running for a pan of water or a glass of water trying to put the flyer out. Sendon explains the ins and outs of using an exchange during that era. Telephones were kind of hard to get in the first days. You had to take a party line. The first one we got, we had to take a party line. It was very ineffective because I would get on a line with somebody else and somebody else would start talking to me like he thought if that was the person he was talking to. And why did you just be surprised how much gossip we heard? <laughs> I solved a scandal there on the telephone one day because I was calling my plumber, and the plumber's daughter was having an affair with some important man downtown. And when I got the line, it was the plumber's wife talking to that man, and so I found out the whole story. She describes a great aunt who worked at the telephone building at 4th and Washington. She made a, quite a hit with all the businessmen because she had a beautiful voice and she had such a kind voice and that the businessmen said she was the perfect telephone operator. And my mother used to tell me that on Christmas Eve, she would take my mother and another one of the cousins with her to work and so they could help her carry home all the gifts that the businessmen would send her up there at the, at the office. In 1949, the Waco Exchange, which comprised nearly 26,000 telephones, switched over from a manual switchboard to the dial system. With this new setup, customers could dial a number themselves and no longer had to go through an operator.
Thanks for listening to the Waco History Podcast. Like what you heard? Subscribe, rate, and review our show on iTunes so we can reach more listeners. You can find show notes and info on every episode at wacohistorypodcast.com and more info on Waco's past at wacohistory.org. Our theme music, used with permission, is Cross the Brazos at Waco, performed by the late Billy Walker. For more info on Billy's music, go to billywalker.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.